Hello, hello, my friends. God bless you. This is Apostle Keith Barra, and we're happy to come before you today. And I'm going to share with you uh, some words of wisdom, uh, something that the Lord showed me uh, 38 years ago. And uh, it was terrifying, but it was also a, a very stern, powerful warning. It's, it's something, this is something that I want to encourage everyone that's in the ministry uh, to to hear this, to listen. I encourage you to share it with people because it can make a great difference in their lives. And uh, so what happened, it was a dream that the Lord gave me a warning uh, 38 years ago. Nothing had happened. And it was just a, a dream I had by night. And in this dream, I saw... This man is start off with this man and this woman, this very happy couple who were happy and in love with each other. And they, they were walking. And I could see in their eyes how much they were in peace and harmony and happily married. And they were walking down this road, this dirt road, uh, you know, like a country road. And as they're walking, over to the uh, left was a, you know, some weeds, some tall grass, maybe. Uh, three or four inches high to the side of the road. And the man looked, turned aside to look, and he saw something in the bushes. And he said, oh, what is this? And he goes, and he comes back out to the grass, tall grass, with this very old suitcase. I remember it was tan brown. And it had a, a like a, a band about three or four inches coming across the top of it down. All the way around, it was the band was red and uh, or, uh, green, maybe a little bit of orange and something else. I don't know what the colors uh, signified anything, but that's just the description of it. And the uh, the top of it, the latches were uh, just so the old kind that you pop up. You know, each one about the size of like an orange slice or something, and. Uh, the man opened the suitcase. His wife was standing there looking at it. As he opened it, what, you know, what could this be? And uh, he opened it, and it was a clown suit inside, thrown to the side. And you could see all the, the clown suit, the different colors, and you saw the red ball for the for the for the nose to put on the nose. And he looked at his wife and said, "You know, honey." I always wanted to try, just to try one of these clown suits, just put it on. And then the scene flashed to later, and this clown suit was demonic. And it had taken over him and his mind and spirit some that he had went crazy. And the wife whom he had loved and cherished, he had grabbed her and began to beat her. And actually, he ripped her apart. That she screamed in terror, the people called the police. And as the police came, her body strewn all over. They came in there to try to contain him and stop him, and he fought the police and and they kept calling more and more police because he kept fighting them and he kept tearing them apart. And he killed like three policemen till they finally overwhelmed him. And it was like, so I walked in the, the room where he was, they, it was, he had killed like three or four of them and their bodies were around, strewn across the room and her body is a horrifying scene. As I'm seeing this, the blood everywhere and her, her body parts and the police body parts there. And so uh, the other four or five policemen were on him and, and they were holding and they had to hold. He was so insane and so uh, uh, fighting so that they had to hold every arm, every leg down to try to contain him. And he was still roaring and raging and, and growling and foaming at the mouth. Uh, and this good man had just been taken over by this this thing, and I and I looked at his face as as 
as I'm standing there horrified and, and I'm thinking I hope they can hold him. And and I look at his face as he's growling and, and foaming at the mouth and just wanting to get free to kill everybody in there. And I looked in his eyes and to my surprise, I realized he wasn't really evil, but it's what this suit had done to him. And then I looked at his face and his face began to change. And to my horror, it changed to my face. And then a second later, it began to change into other people that I knew, other ministers and preachers, and it would change face every second. It was a different face that kept changing. And this was signifying that this spirit can take over anybody that yields to it. And, and I'm just really, you know, just shaking. Then the, the, the dream goes to later. And my wife and I were walking and we're just grieved and shaken over what the spirit has done to this happy couple. And as I look down on my hand, there's a piece of the clown nose on my hand that's, that's smeared on my skin. And we begin to get terrified because I knew even though it was a piece, it was enough to infect me. And I began to you know, afraid to see if, I was afraid to see if, if this thing was going to overtake me. And my wife, you know, she, she like stepped back and I didn't know if she should run or if I should run before this spirit overtook me. But then I said, honey, hold on. We don't have to be afraid. In the name of Jesus, we have power over every spirit. And even this evil spirit that drove that man to do all the things that we did, we could take authority, let's pray. We join hands, we pray, and we bound that evil spirit in the name of Jesus and commanded it to leave us alone. And then the dream ended, and I woke up. And I woke up like, wow, that was a crazy dream. I said, it's so crazy. It doesn't mean anything. And the Spirit of God checked me. He said, yes, it does. I said, well, what does it mean? My mind world, what could that possibly mean? I got down on my knees and began to pray, Lord, why did you give me this dream? What is the meaning of this dream? What was that suit and that spirit that overtook him is in, in, in such a danger. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It said, the suit is the spirit of compromise. And I said, compromise? Well, why is it a clown suit? Why was it represent a clown suit? And he said, because when you begin to compromise, you will allow the devil to make a fool out of you. Don't ever give in to the spirit of compromise. And so, of course, I'm talking about the spirit of comp the spirit talking about compromise in terms of compromising your sin, not not in negotiating with people, but compromising instead of living holy and living righteous. Given into sin or evil, you know, evil, or sinful things. And so a couple of days later, I was uh, with a, 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 a guy I knew um, who, and, and, and I said, hmm, I wonder if I should tell him about the dream I had. And uh, the Spirit impressed me, you know, like the yes. Tell him. So 
So I said, okay. And I told him, and he began to look nervous and scared. And then I'm posted at his reaction, the way he's acting. Uh, and he said something, I remember exactly what, what, what he said. He was trying to give me some explanation of what, what it might have been. Come to find out, make a long story short, he was doing what he had begun to do exactly all the things that I had saw in that dream. Dream. Uh, he got involved with a woman he shouldn't have been involved with because he's a married man, and and uh, oh, he did his wife so terrible and d devastated her, broke her apart just like in the movie. I mean, emotionally, in the dream rather. But I want to encourage you today to believe God and never give in to the spirit of compromise. And when Satan comes to attack all of us or tempt all of us, he tempted Jesus. So he's certainly going to tempt you. And Jesus resisted him with the word. And we have to resist Satan with the word. And you just have to make up your mind. You're going to say, for God I live and for God I die. And I will not compromise my salvation. Job said, my righteousness, I will hold fast and will not let it go. And that's what I want to encourage you to hold fast to your righteousness. Don't let go and don't give in to the spirit of compromise. God bless you. Let, let me pray. Let me pray just before we go. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone uh, listening to this video. God, some of you have directed to hear at this time. This is just what they need. God, I, I take authority over every evil spirit that would tempt them and try them to do wrong and to mess up their lives and ministries. Father, give them strength and the determination to live for you and to be righteous and holy. For you commanded us, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.